This is part eight in a series of videos in which I'm repairing and partially restoring a vintage IBM 5120 computer. If you've watched the series so far you'll know that when I initially opened up the machine it was in a very poor condition. This is just one of the pieces of metal work from it and uh, normally what I would do here is just uh, off camera is clean this, strip it right down, repaint it uh, but I've been asked to show the process in a bit more detail. Uh, some people want to see how I go about uh, dealing with something like this. You can see it's uh, very badly rusted and um, it obviously needs to be refinished. I, I could put it back in after just cleaning it but um, in all honesty I couldn't really bring myself to do that. It needs a bit more work. So I thought I would uh, take a, a slight detour in this video and just go through the basics of how I go about restoring something like this. So we'll take this piece um, and restore it back to almost new condition. Uh, I've already stripped it down of course as a fan goes on here and, and various other bits. There's a, a motherboard that's on here. We'll look at those in another video. Uh, but you can see this is a fairly complex shape so if you were to try and clean this with uh, abrasive uh, then it would be a, a very slow and tedious process and it will be very difficult to get into all the nooks and crannies and, and do a good job of, uh, of cleaning it. Uh, so what I'm going to do is uh, the normal approach I would use on a piece of uh, steel work like this and I'm going to bead blast it back to bare metal uh, and then I'm going to repaint it. When I've got it back to bare metal I will etch prime it and then I will put a, a, a matte black top coat that will very closely match the original colour. I'm not going to be refinishing all the parts in the machine so I do want to make sure I get something that's fairly close. When you're doing this sort of work in a, a vintage machine it is fairly important to look fairly carefully at the piece of metal work that you're dealing with. This particular piece is uh, painted, it's got a, a pair, a, a coat of um, enamel paint on it but a lot of the parts are not painted even though they might appear to be painted when you first look at them. So these side cheeks are also black uh, but these aren't painted. Uh, these have uh, black oxide on them. So, so basically it's a, an oxide layer that's built up on the surface of the, uh, the metal. And these particular pieces are not in poor condition so I'm not going to retouch these. Uh, but on some of the pieces that have uh, oxide on this machine I also need to refinish. The process I'm going to show here will work just as well whether you're refinishing a piece uh, that's oxide coated uh, or whether it's painted. Uh, one thing to bear in mind though is um, a piece like this if you were to put it into something like um, evapor rust that would take the rust off along with a lot of the loose debris um, but it would leave the paint intact but evapor rust will take the uh, black coat off these. Uh, vapor rust um, removes the oxide layer, um, normally the rust of course, but in this case it would also move the, uh, the black coating. If that's what you want, all well and good. Um, otherwise just be aware of that, don't put black oxide parts into something like um, evapor rust because it will uh, ruin it and you will then be forced to refinish it. Uh, so how I go about doing this, as I say, varies depending on the particular component. But in this case we'll get this into the uh, bead blast chamber and as I say I've been asked to show this in a bit more detail so I will be trying to video that process. It's not a very easy thing to video because of the, the nature of the process. It's very um, dusty and hard to see through but I will try and video it. Uh, I can't put the camera inside the chamber um, for obvious reasons uh, but I'll try and get some decent um, shots of it. Uh, it's way too noisy to um, have the sound on so uh, I'll play some music while we're bead blasting but uh, let's get this across into the workshop into the bead blast chamber and then uh, I'll show the process of getting this stripped back to bare metal. Okay so here we are in the workshop I'm hoping you can hear me over the noise of the storm outside but this is the bead blast cabinet and uh, I have modified this quite a bit since I first got it. If you're not familiar with the bead blasting process, then uh, essentially you take in compressed air, uh, you blow it through a gun, mix it with some uh, fine grit media, and uh, blow it at high speed at the part you're trying to clean. In this case, it will be this. 
Uh, the vacuum cleaner is here through a cyclone separator and the idea of that is air is drawn into the chamber and it pulls all the dust and debris out so you can see what's going on otherwise the chamber just fills up with uh, dust and you can't see anything. I'm not sure quite how much you'll be able to see in this process um, it does get very dusty in there. Um, what I use for media mostly is uh, fine glass shots it's uh, recycled glass ground into quite fine particles uh, and that's used as I say to be fired at high speed at the target and that strips off the uh, coating or the outer layer of the uh, piece that you're working on. So we'll pop the part into the chamber, close the door and uh, then we can start bead blasting. It's a very noisy process and um, I'm afraid the LED light is probably going to flicker a bit in there but uh, hopefully you'll be able to see some of what's going on. It is just really a case of working from one end of the part to the other, uh, blowing off the material and um, if watching paint dries and your sort of thing you might want to skip the rest of this video. Okay, well so far that's taken about 10 minutes. You may have noticed certain parts aren't uh, bead blasting clean and in particular around these surfaces and that's because these parts originally had some um, a kind of a rubber seal on them. The rubber seal is long gone but the sticky residue has uh, remained and it's very difficult to bead blast that off because it's kind of springy so the, the bead uh, blast media just bounces off. So what I'm going to do is just take this out, heat these areas with a blow lamp, not too hot, just enough to dry this out and uh, bake it. It will go hard and brittle and then I can put this back in the bead blast cabinet and it will uh, uh, clean off very quickly and easily. Okay, so a few minutes with the blow lamp. Um, just really get it hot enough until it stops bubbling and then uh, it goes hard and crunchy and it should clean off now fairly easily so we'll get this part finished off have a quick look and make sure I haven't missed any bits and um, then it just needs blowing clean and it's ready for painting
Okay, so that's the part done. Took about 15 to 20 minutes in total. Far quicker than it would be trying to use uh, abrasive. Just get it out of the cabinets, have a quick look, and uh, get it back across to the lab, inspect it, see if it needs any repairs. Um, one advantage of this process, uh, you probably can't uh, see on the camera, but it leaves a nice um, keyed surface ready to paint. So especially in conjunction with uh, an etching primer, you get extremely good adhesion of the paint to the metal surface and a very good nice even finish of course. So it's removed all the corrosion and all the rust. We'll get it onto the uh, bench in the lab, have a look at it, uh, but I think this is just about ready for painting. So here is the part. I did give it a quick inspection while I was in the workshop and it was slightly bent. Uh, this rear portion was bent so I've straightened that out. Um, but as you can see the bead blaster makes an excellent job and by the time this has been painted it will look like a new piece and I'll do a side-by-side -side comparison shot of this once it's been painted uh, alongside the uh, way it looked originally. Uh, but as I said this is a, a fairly complex shape and it would be very difficult and tedious trying to uh, clean this up uh, with an abrasive or, or uh, any other means. You could try a chemical process but um, uh, again it would, be, it would be very slow and messy and uh, still wouldn't give you the nice keyed surface ready for painting. So as I say in the next video uh, we'll have a look at this uh, painted up and um, we'll then get on to the other parts. So this is not a full restoration, I'm just showing this to give you an idea as to uh, approaches that you can take uh, to get these things looking like new again. There's many different methods and techniques of course, uh, this is just one technique I use, but I do use this method quite a lot on uh, metalware on uh, these old machines and it does make an exceedingly nice uh, job of it. And I much prefer doing this rather than trying to patch up pieces and just uh, touch up um, uh, small areas because it always looks a bit messy uh, and as you've seen it doesn't take uh, all that long. Uh, you've probably also seen why I don't normally show this on video, it's uh, very slow and tedious uh, but also very difficult to uh, video, I'm not quite sure how much you will have actually seen. Also apologies if I appeared a bit uh, cack handed in the video, I'm not normally left handed, I just swapped over in the hope that um, you could see a bit more clearly what, what I was doing. Uh, but even so, as you can see, very useful machine and uh, it should make the finished product much better.